the most delightfully fascinating character in the realms of mystery, Charlie Chan. The murder of Ellen Landini at Pine View, every guest in the house has at various times fallen under suspicion. Ah Singh, the aged Chinese servant, however, is the one who undoubtedly was the last person to see Landini alive. And Ah Singh, on entering the study, had identified a forty-five lying on top of the desk as his. Inspector Chan, seated in the study with Sheriff Holt and the sheriff's father, Sam Holt, discussed the question of Ah Singh's identification of the gun. Before we exercise our tongues in an effort to learn from Cecile why she withheld information, I think, yes, perhaps it is better that we consider importance of Ah Singh's identification of 45. Which 45? We are agreed he could not possibly have mistaken for Madame Landini. I've been thinking a good deal about that, Inspector, and, well, there's only one thing I can think of. Yes, Sheriff? Ah Singh mistook it for the forty-five you found down at the house where Swan was murdered. Yes, son, that's about the way I look at it. And since the gun you found was the one used to kill not only Swan, but Landini, who would be most likely to recognize it? The man who owned it, of course. Yeah. Sorrowfully feel that your conclusions are in part justified, but must submit that such reasoning, while perfectly logical, is not admissible in court of law. Well, you're right there, Mr. Chan. No prosecuting attorney would risk pressing a charge on that evidence. To be perfectly frank, while I agree with you in conclusion, I am puzzled as to why Mr. Romano should deny knowledge of guns when he knows that investigation would reveal that he had served with Italian forces during World War. It was very foolish denial. Well, isn't it possible, though, Mr. Chan, that Romano might not even have thought of his services in connection with your question? Yes, Mr. Holt, it's possible. And if so, clearly indicates that Mr. Romano is not guilty person. By the way, Inspector, have you learned anything yet from the book Landini was writing when she was murdered? It is so far very interesting and very delightful. Landini appears from the pages of her book a very different person than one would gather from listening to comments <laughs> of her various and varied husbands. I remember her when she first came here as a bride of Dudley Ward, a more delightful young woman you'd hardly expect to meet. To return to business, our immediate task is to find that single fact which will explain for us the connection between the pink scarf belonging to Leslie Beaton being found in the dead woman's hand, the red lid on the yellow box, the yellow lid on the red box, and the blue fuzz from the blanket on the arm of the chair and... Uh, and, Inspector? And Ah Singh's willingness, almost eagerness, to claim 45 as his, then his almost immediate denial. That's the part I don't get at all. Why should he claim it in the first place? Because he thought it was his? I don't think so. Not after the way he has consistently denied all the other things we charged him with. When one hunts the fox, it is well to attempt to think as the fox thinks. Let us place ourselves in a situation in which Ah Singh found himself when he saw 45 lying on top of death. Well, his first thought would be, well, 
They found the gun. And his next thought would be to deny that it was his gun, not to admit it. However, that is what Ah Sing did not do. What then was his reason? Suppose for a moment, if you please, that Ah Sing did not kill Landini. Then recognition of said gun as his would, in his eyes, in no way incriminate him. As he would be aware of fact that his gun had not been used at least to commit murder. Yeah. And he might for a moment think that it had been discovered that his gun had been used to fire the misleading shot after landing his death. But that's impossible, Dad. No one could mistake that forty-five for that gun of Landini's. Yeah, but if Ah Sing didn't know anything about the affair at all, suppose he is innocent. He wouldn't know which gun was which. Correct, Mr. Holt. And do not forget, please, that Ah Sing did not examine forty-five sufficiently closely to determine whether or not it had ever been fired. Then... Then Ah Sing's recognition of that gun could be as much in his favor as it is against him. Quite so, Sheriff. But there is another explanation of Ah Sing's contradictory attitude. It could mean that Ah Sing went to the study. Ah. Come in, please. Ah. Sit down, Miss Beaton, please. Thank you. Uh, Sheriff, will you ask the seal to step into study? Uh, please. Also, Mr. Ryder... Surely. Thank you so much. You seem very serious, Mr. Chen. I am, Miss Beaton. I, uh, I am going to ask of you a favor. Oh, uh, certainly, Mr. Chen. You, you don't really have to ask, you know. But I am remindful that between friends, frequent reproofs make friendship distant. If you mean that you are to reprove me for something, then I assure you that it could never affect our friendship. That is indeed heartening admission. Miss Beaton, you are to marry Sheriff. After much thought expended upon matter, I have determined to say this to you. Before many hours have passed, go to youthful Sheriff and confess to him that you have been withholding vital piece of information. But, Mr. Chen... Please, please hear me out. Confess to him that you have acted foolishly if loyally. I much prefer that you tell him what you know than I tell him what I surmise. I... I say nothing more now. Here he comes with Cecile. Ah. Please sit down, Cecile. Yes, Monsieur Chen. I told you before lunch, Cecile, that I wished explanation from you as to why you did not tell either Sheriff or South that you saw someone creeping down back stairs in dead of night? Monsieur Chan, I tell you before, I am scared. I asked my husband to speak to you and ask if I cannot leave Pine View. Oh, I do not sleep anymore. I am afraid that I will be the next one to be killed. And why should you fear that, Cecile? Oh, do not ask me, Monsieur Sheriff. I, I have the feeling. Why must I stay here? I know nothing. I was that, not... That, Cecile, is where we disagree with you. Had you always told the truth without urging, the sheriff might have seen his way clear to allow you to leave Pine View. But you must admit that you have had information which you did not see fit to tell us. The penalty, Cecile, for telling an untruth is that no matter how much you may protest, in the end, the strictest truth will not be believed. Oh, I did not mean to do wrong, Monsieur Chen. I ask my husband, you speak, Mr. Chen. He tell me he do that. Then I say, speak, Mr. Ward. Perhaps Mr. Ward can, can, what you say, persuade Mr. Chen to let me leave Pine View. Your husband spoke to Mr. Ward? My husband. He say, you come speak with Mr. Ward yourself. I say, tomorrow I speak to him. Then, that night, I have feeling of someone in my room. I wake, switch on light. No one is there, but I hear back stairs creak. I, I open door, take one quick look. I see someone, then I go back to bed. You told all of this to Mr. Ward? Yes, monsieur, I tell him. And Mr. Ward said what, Cecile? Oh, monsieur, you... You understand, I must work for Monsieur Ward... 
If you do not give me or my husband good recommendation, we cannot get other position. Ah, if you wish us to understand, Cecile, that what you say is in confidence, I am certain that in as far as the law permits us, we do so. Am I correct, Sheriff? Right, Inspector. Very well, Cecile. I... I tell Mr. Ward everything. I tell him that it is Monsieur Ryder I see on back stairs. Monsieur Ward, he say... Yes? He, he say, better that you do not mention this to Inspector Chen. It will perhaps prolong unnecessarily... I think he say, it might prolong unnecessarily the investigation. Hmm. Well, thank you so much, Cecile. We shall respect your confidence. Perhaps, yes, perhaps better that you go now before we invite Mr. Ryder to give his explanation of the affair. Oh, thank you, Monsieur Chan, for understanding. Hmm. Did you see Mr. Ryder? Yeah, he said he'd be right up. I can understand Cecile's attitude. I've worked for men who, well, who gave you to understand that they practically owned you while you were drawing your salary. But then Mr. Ward never gave me that impression. But at present, you are guest of Mr. Ward, not paid servant. Yes, that's true, Inspector. You wanted to see me, Chan, I believe? Correct, Mr. Ryder. Can you explain what you were doing last night? I can. What, if you please? I played billiards with Dudley until 11.10. Had a nightcap and went to my room. I read for about 20 minutes and then went to bed. You did not leave your room again, Mr. Ryder? I did not. You're absolutely positive of that, Ryder? Be careful, Mr. Ryder. Take your time in answering. Say, what is this? Has somebody else been murdered and I don't know about it? Please, Mr. Ryder, at present, we are doing questioning. We await your answer. Did you or did you not leave your room and go down back stairs last night? I did not. That is your final word, Mr. Ryder? My only and final word, Chen. Now or at any time. What significance lies behind John Ryder's denial? Or is Cecile trying to hide something by throwing suspicion upon Ryder? We'll have to leave it to Inspector Chan to determine. After you have heard from your sponsor, Inspector Chan will be with us again. Chan, what thought have you for us this evening? Mr. Wilson, I have been thinking of deceitful answers given by so many witnesses at Pine View. Ancient Chinese saying has it that one cannot tell by looking at baskets whether it contain rubbish or precious stones. So it is with man. Outward appearance is not indication of whether he is honest or dishonest. That is something only to be learned by critical observation. Mm-hmm. 